So here I am making another exploration in my sketchbook and this is an example of intuitive painting. Starting off with no idea what I'm going to make but just starting off by playing with paint. And I've started with a very bold, uh, bright, saturated colour and now I'm adding in the opposite to that which is desaturated, greyed off, um, mixed up colour. So one is pretty much really bright and, and just really bold and this one is cool and desaturated and still kind of reasonably dark but it is a little bit lighter than the red. And now I'm coming in with a lighter colour which is cool and a little bit desaturated as well and I'm just basically building up um, paint layers just to create, just to mix and um, excavate and just to create an interesting textured surface. Scratching through with a comb just to spread the paint around with different tools and see what sort of effects I can get. Now when that's dry I'm coming in with some white paint and because basically this underpainting here, the surface I've created is quite sort of dark and I'm going to lighten it up and then excavate again to retrieve some of that lovely texture and um, marks and, and, and colour and stuff underneath the white paint. At this stage I still have no idea, I'm just creating marks, I'm just playing with paint, I'm just seeing what um, appears. So taking more of the white paint off with a damp cloth and excavating more with the colour shaper, just really digging into that paint and, and taking more of it off to see what sort of effects I can get. Now I've got quite a light surface to work with. Okay, and so now I want to add some shapes and I'm looking for these collage shapes that I've made. And I actually show you how I made these in a previous video um, called the number one design tip for abstract painting. And here I am just gluing them down and um, putting them into this uh, painting. I've selected these ones because they have the colours that are in this painting. So um, they're the blues and greens and the greys. And I'm just gluing those in. And these are um, different to what I've already got. I've got a really textured surface and now I'm adding in some different sort of marks that are, appear on these um, collage shapes. And now with a stencil um, shape I'm going to use that just to create some other shapes and I'm using a dark mixed up sort of warm dark brown colour. This I know will go well with this with the blues with the cool colours that I've already got in this painting. So I'm going for I've got light cool colours and now I'm going for a dark warm colour and that's opposite so I know that that's going to work well with the colours I've already got. And I'm just adding in some dark values, working them in, into the composition, spreading them around um, the page and um, just using my brush and the colour shaper just to get different marks and effects with this dark paint. And this will help to create a strong design in my painting. I've got lights, now I need some darks. Okay, having used wet paint, it's now to time to change my media. So I'm going to use some dry media. I've picked up a red um, pencil. I've got some red colour already in this composition, so the red pencil will go. And I'm just going to spread some of that paint around with the pencil and draw into the wet paint and just create different marks and sort of more um, intentional sort of delicate drawing type marks with the pencil. And then uh, with the colour shaper I'm just going to dig into some of that uh, wet paint still and see what sort of textural marks I can get by moving some of that wet paint off the page. I 
over the top of the dark brown, I'm bringing in uh, the blue, which is a colour that is already in the painting. And I'm doing more sort of intentional, careful painting with um, a finer brush. And But I don't want to get too fussy, so I'm sort of hovering between careful painting and allowing the paint just to do its own thing. You'll see the way I'm holding the brush, it's quite loose and I'm trying to be loose with it as well as having a little bit more control than I've had with the, how I've applied the paint up until now. As I apply this blue, I'm making sure that I spread it right through the whole composition so that there will be areas of blue all the way from the very left hand side over to the right hand side. And now I'm going to bring in some light, a light value, whitish paint and with that little brush I'm adding in a contrast over there to lead the eye over to that side of the painting. Bringing in more red and doing some more drawing. So while I have a lot of loose paintwork in this painting, a loose line is, um, is similar but different and that just adds interest to the surface and to the, different, and to the variety of marks and effects that I have in this painting. Once again, bringing more light values into the composition, pushing back the dark, highlighting the red, and making more of that sort of soft light green. Still mark making with a pencil, just to add interest to the surface. So I'm defining shapes, having strong con contrast between light and dark and uh, making sure that these strong contrasts are sort of balanced throughout the composition. All the time I'm looking at the whole thing from a sort of from a distance, bird's eye view type thing to look at the design and I really like that shape on the left hand side so I want to uh, take out some of the distractions to uh, make the focus be more on that shape on the left hand side. And this is the final painting. And uh, it's quite loose, much looser than um, some of my previous paintings in my sketchbook, but I'm really happy with um, some of the effects that I got with being loose with the paint and having those really strong contrasts between light and dark and keeping quite a limited colour palette, just to the blues and greens, the dark brown, a little bit of red and a lot of uh, light value um, to sort of find the design later in the painting.